the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. It was, listen, before, before this, Gentile, we're talking about stuff that's recorded in scripture. We, we ain't talking about just the, the how I feel or something. This is, this is the recorded in scripture. Right. These are Gentiles. And the Gentile should only be able to come into the kingdom by way of proselyting. So Peter is absolutely, is, this is why God gives him the vision. Because Peter is operating according to the known principle that have been, listen, ordained by God. Right. Where does God ordain homosexuality? Well, see, you're saying that God doesn't ordain fornication either. Oh, and, oh nowhere to, and nowhere in scripture do people, Paul just told you. That if you do these things, you ain't got no part in the kingdom. Yeah, but the point, the point is that what are we going out to minister to? We are ministering to the ungodly, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that you're trying to put, I'm talking about people who you're trying to tell that their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm trying to, I don't even know what's, I can't, we, we can't tell. I'm saying is that when a person, we go out, Bishop got, I mean, Elder got a street minister. He goes out and he goes right in the, in the, in the, in the deep in the dungeon. Uh, of the people that are out there, and if he gonna sit there and tell them that he's ministering about Jesus Christ, and and that person, let's say that person is a, a, a fornicator, let's use it, or a drunkard, like Elder talked about being himself, are uh, we telling that person unless you stop drinking, stop being an alcoholic right now, you can't come into the kingdom? See, you coming at that from the wrong angle. I, well, I'm just trying to tell you, you coming at that from the wrong angle. Nobody told me to stop fornicating. When I heard the gospel and the Spirit of God convict me, I knew it. And then I had to tell me that. He's, he, he convicted that in my heart. Yeah, and nobody well, told me nothing. Well, well the question is, okay. Gospel, on, the Spirit of God, using the Word of God, is going to do what it was intended to do. You well, ain't, bro, bro, I think the experience is something you do. You ain't got no hand in this. And what I'm bro. telling you is, the Spirit of God is going to do that thing that God purposed according to the word. Well, you know, and, and, and that makes sense. But I think the, the experience is going to be as unique as the people are. Yes, I mean, sir. If, no, if, if, if we superimpose what happened in your, your conversion to what happened in mine, there'll be a little bit of a correlation, a little bit. The end result of it is at some point, we were brought into alignment with the Spirit of God, with, with Christ. I'm just looking himself. at what happened in Scripture. Yeah, I, yeah, I, don't yeah. see, I don't see that situation in Scripture. What you talking about as far as people making mistakes even after they oh, yeah. I don't see everywhere that the gospel is preached, that when when the, when that word comes, it always produces repentance. And repentance has to do with what turning away from the existing life base that you have and embracing the new life base. Not 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 he ain't dealing with your financial problem or your marital problem. He dealing with the core of your life. With the core of your life. But, Everything and, and, that is outside of their life is, is dealt with right there so that now you can build on it. No, but, no, and, 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 and I think that I agree that. with the portion of the immediate, the immediate transfer, the immediate transfer. Right. But the, the, as far as renewing of the mind is concerned, I yeah. think it's a process. I don't, I don't think, I don't even think people not, come to the realization of, they don't even come to a place where they, they, they understand their need to yeah. get in some places until later. Right. It's yeah. like, my mind was renewed. <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't even right. So, so, I, wasn't so. even whole. I wasn't even raised in a church. I didn't know nothing about the Bible. But when I got saved, immediately I know that fornication was wrong. Now, how did I know that? Yeah, I got, I got yeah, God had to reveal it to you. God had to reveal it to you. And I even got another one for you. I got another example in the Bible. You remember that, this, uh, Elder? You remember that guy that was a, uh, uh, he was a wizard before? Yeah. Is that he all kinds of stuff, and so he came in. Oh, in a nice, in a nice. And he tried to be like he said. He he's a convert now. He's a convert walking with Paul, yeah. and then he saw Paul do miracles, Bishop. And then he said and said, "How can I buy this?" Oh, he, buy all the goods, yeah. So, oh, so, 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 so he was converted, huh? 
Oh, Converse. What? What? So, oh, so, Converse. So, do we have? Are we... The outcome in the story, and you see very clearly that that was not the work of the Spirit. Well, we agree with that. But point we okay, said, then, okay, then, what, if, they, if that's not the work of the Spirit, then why are we bringing that up? Well, no, no, I got a good point, though. The point is that Paul... Well, you is... still have a point. If you bring up a case where the Spirit of God has not produced the work, then that for us, I'm saying, we need to talk about that. But if, no, there's a balance to it. Paul accepted that man as being a convert because he was walking with Paul. He was with Paul. No, no, no. Paul never tested that. Well, you got to look at the fact that it's just like anybody else, when they walk in with, we don't get the point that he individually, the people that walk with Paul or Peter or Cornelius, like the people that came in Cornelius' house, we're not saying that, we don't know, we don't have any information about what they continue to do after they got converted. Because they got to go through some growth and discipleship and everything else. The, the wizard was just another example of somebody who came into the body of Christ and Paul did not kick him out. Matter of fact, what Paul did was saying is, look, I rebuke you and you, what he said, uh, Elder, it's kind of like... God of goodness. <laughs> he thought, oh, thought about him bad. But he, but he did oh, say... Associated that man with the workings of Satan. But the man, but the man was allowed to come back though as, as long as he had changed and repent from what he had to do. Because the man said, Lord, don't say that. I mean, no, you no. remember the man, the man was like, oh, wait a minute, right? He said, none of these things come upon me. <laughs> don't let these things come okay, upon okay, me. Okay. I tell you what, I tell you what, all I'm telling you is, you, you will make your decision. And what you need to understand is that when it comes down to leadership in the church, you, you, what you're now doing is you're going to get held accountable for how the decision that you make regarding what you let in affects the body of Christ. I, all I I'm telling you is, there is a, a, to that, I, I, don't, I don't play with that. Uh, you know something really funny about it, and, and I think this comes down, it's really it's really a good point because uh, we look at what Jesus did with the woman who was caught in adultery, where yeah. the law said that she was supposed to be stoned. And yeah. he said, where are you accusing that? And yeah. he let it go. And he said, go sin no more. These son works go and sin no more. Don't and, 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 go and, and, through a process. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, so, don't so, so, he didn't tell him to go work it up. He no, didn't tell him to go work it up. Think, but what he, he, but what he did was, was he, he told him, look, you go home and don't his, sin no more. His actions toward her were governed by compassion. And I think like that's where we have to start out at because not everybody's going to take the same kind of walk. Uh, his, his, his compassion is that he didn't give her what she deserved, but at the same time, he doesn't tolerate her to continue in what she's doing. And, and ben, I got a good, I got another, I got some more examples for you because you know, as we keep talking, you're gonna make me go find the examples. The letters to the <laughs> churches. Look for example. The letters to the churches. The letters to the churches. These are to believers. These are born again accepted into the church, part of the body of Christ, those letters was talking about their behaviors that they need to fix, like you no. said. But no. the point is that no. they were in the body of Christ. point again. Why? He's Why? telling them that in each of these churches, yep. he has already told you that in every church, there's going to be wheat and there's going to be tear. Yeah, yeah. What he's telling them, most of those churches, he's telling them, you have tolerated and allowed these tears to be in your midst and to have leadership authority over my people. That's what he was rebuking. But 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 the fact is they now the, the, if that church was that you agree that's a church, right? Yes. And you agree now like, I'm like for for example, let's use the first one and we gotta go. We, I think we have a good conversation for next week. <laughs> Cause that's a good point because we got a lot of people in the body of Christ. Either we saying we got a whole bunch of people that call themselves saints or not. So you don't think there's tears in every in, in every part of the body of Christ? Well, well, I think so, but I think I think all the members have things that they got to work on in the body of Christ. That's all I'm trying to say. So if it is everybody got different levels, you got some that. What's I mean, now, how do you get how do you get a pastor? How do you get you know that you know by history, there's people who've been pastors of churches. And they even make jokes of this stuff, especially talking about Baptist church. I ain't trying to say it, but you know, 
they know that they slept with people in the congregation and yet they are ministering the word of god but they they fornicated some of them got caught and all some all the ones that we know about the ones that got caught oh no okay come, what, what's the purpose what, what's the purpose of this verse you got there okay I'm just talking about, if, we, if we look at it look at david's situation i mean even though that was old yeah, david. Yesterday, david was a scoundrel yeah. But it did not, he didn't displace him because of his his, 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 Man, David, his heart was with God. But his actions, David messed up one time. David had no lifestyle of living upon a case. Well, he, he not, not upon a case, but remember when he numbered Israel? Yeah, one time. <laughs> he numbered Israel, and then he had to kill some people off of that. Right, right. So David had done a couple of things. No, tell me what David has a lifestyle of sin. David had a couple David's heart, David's heart was toward God. Yeah, show me where he had a lifestyle of sin. Enumerate for me the things that David did, where well, he got a trail that shows he got a lifestyle of sin. The Bible said that his hands were too bloody to, for him to be in that house of God. Because okay, his so, hands so, were bloody. Listen, his hands were bloody because God ordained him to go kill those people. Well, they say, well obviously it was that it was it was a that reward well, was that I'm not gonna let you build my house. Because you okay. can't. So, so it, it's all hand too bloody when God tells him to go down and kill all the Amalekite men, he, women, child, ox, animal. Is this it? He's a God, or God, God instructed him to do that. Right? Right? So but you did, can't yeah. compare the kind of thing when God tells a man to do something. David was called to be a warrior, chose to be a warring king. All God is saying is that a warring king can't build a house. Well, well, that could be true, but we also know he sinned too. Yeah, how many times did he sin? Well, based on like you said, the number that that time he did that numbering thing, he got he he brought disease upon Israel uh, because he shouldn't have done it. He was told not to do it. The part about him taking uh, Bathsheba was a sin. Uh, okay. So, I mean, if you want me okay. to try to find okay, out, now I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you how we think differently from God. I'm gonna show it to you. It's good. I'm gonna let God testify on you with the hand, and I let you take an issue with God. Because I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take an issue with God. I'm telling you that. Okay, I'm gonna show you something. You enumerate the thing you said David did, right? I'm gonna show you what God said. Can I? What God said about David. But you know, as you look at it up, I want you to remember one scripture said David sinned no more. It was a point where David sinned no more, and that was when he was a very old age. No, was that what, what, elder, what, what, he, that was old, he was old there, was it? He's saying no more. No, this thing has to do with his whole life. I ain't talking about and what is it? I'm talking about God testifying about David's whole life. I saw, you know, I even saw that one part where they, you know, when they found out when he was dead, they put a, a virgin. <laughs> they put a virgin by him and, and they know he was dead because he, he didn't sleep with it. He ain't married, you know he didn't marry the girl because he, <laughs> That's fornication. You 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 you, you muted, Elder. But yeah, that that told you about how they thought about David. Oh, man, David had several wives. Okay. And concubines. They were not wives. Turn to first, first, first King chapter 14. All right, go. Cool. Hey, Bishop, what's a concubine? We we'll see what we're into this. What, what's a concubine? This, this is what this is what you were saying. I want to show you what scripture says. I, I, I think we're paraphrasing pretty good. Go ahead. <laughs> Which one? It, uh, first probably King, the chapter, one with. Chapter okay. one. Let me let me get it. Let me just read all all of them together. It's the nine the eighteen year of King uh, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, ran Abijah over oh, Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Machah, the daughter of Ab Absalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his God, as the heart of David, his father. Nevertheless, for David's sake. But what, 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 what chapter are you on? 14, 1 Kings? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm on chapter 15, verse 1. Okay, 15. Okay. I just want to make sure we're together. <laughs> Got you now. Okay. <laughs> so he said, now in 18, in 18 year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat reigned Abijam over Judah. Yes, sir. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Uh huh. And his mother's name was Mesa, 
uh -huh. the daughter of Absalom. Yes, sir. And he walked in all the sins of his father, because uh -huh. he had done before him. Uh -huh. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord God, Lord his God, as the heart of David, his father. Which was a repentant, whatever I said, David was a oh, repentant oh, heart. Oh. Ain't through yet. Nevertheless, for David's sake, uh -huh. did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem uh -huh. to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that was commanded him all the days of his life. And the fact is, though, you're saying is that he said, commanded him to do, but he did sin. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. So, so, so that includes the sinning that he did? Hold on. All the days of his life. Yes, sir. Save only what he commanded him to do. Hold on. Save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And that's involving Bathsheba and his taking Bathsheba and killing Uriah. Well, what now, about the scripture? Now, the scripture says, yeah. it contradicts what y'all were just saying. No, no, no. I think it's one of what we're saying oh, is no, no. Y'all were just numerating David did this, David did that, David did that, David did that. But this is what I'm saying. Well, but so, 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 that, let's uh, bring that perspective and balance in. That means that some things that a person does that is not law by law can be overlooked by God is what you're saying. No, what I'm telling you is, is that when it comes down to this thing, it is not what we think or how we feel. It is not my opinion nor all your opinion. It is our responsibility to go into scripture and see how God has dealt with men in the past and to let that become the means for us coming to expect for God to give us direction and instruction concerning because God don't change. So, 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 if God let David get away with it, then mm -hmm. I can expect him to let me get away with it. Well, I mean, he did let him get away. He said, he said, suffer that issue, right? But, 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 <laughs> what, about, what about the time? Now, this is a prophet. This is Samuel the prophet. Do you, but, but, you know, got an insight as to how God sees David? The, the, uh, no, but, Maybe, maybe the insight into how he sees men. And men. Maybe hard, hard to work was the word of God, but his actions weren't always. And that was made evident by the fact that when he numbered Israel, God killed him. Yeah, so it wasn't like he was fleeing unless he wanted to kill him. I mean, unless it was God's plan to kill Israel. Then, you got to look at what the text. It said David did. It ain't talking about his heart. It's talking about it said David did that, which was right. Well, we, what we're saying is, but we know what I'm saying is we read the, the good thing about this is that as the prophet was saying, we're saying is that we saw in the writings of David's history yeah. that some things that was not pleasing to God. To include even when they were bringing the ark back, that person who put his hands on it, David was mad at God for something that the man was trying to do. The man was just trying to bring the ark back to the to Jerusalem. Yeah. And, and no. it was stumbling, and he tried to no. battle to keep from falling. No. So there was, there was a... The scripture was clear. No one was supposed to touch that ark except the Levites. So that means that David did not so do David was king. He, he, he David by doing that. Yep. Okay. So David, David was in charge of that movement. No. What David did was accepted the ark on the cart that the dog on, that the Gentiles put it on. Right. Okay, so David doesn't understand that when you start moving this thing, now, this is not his fault. They captured the ark, the ark is coming back. When they send it back, they put it on a brand new, they put it on a brand new car with ox cars. Right. All David is doing is trying to get it back to Jerusalem. Yes. And now, that's right. Okay, what you saying there? Well, the, the, well, obviously, when the person died, and, and then look, David was angry with God because he was like, I'm trying to make do something right. And yet, what is, what is, it, what is it that David was, what is it that David was angry with God? Oh, I think it's, it's in there. He was not pleased with that. He left it, that's why he left it at the other guy's house. He, he said, said David, no, it doesn't say David was angry with God. He was afraid of God. He was afraid of God. Yeah, he got scared. No, <laughs> what happened is David got frightened. Yeah. And left that off, left that off at the, over Dean, over Dean's house.
<laughs> for a long time, right? And he said nothing like he got mad with God. He said he was frightened because of what he saw. And so he left the ark and opened the house. Then he went and found out that you shouldn't have been carried in an ark caught in the first place. <laughs> hey, Bishop, I think this will be a good conversation for next week if you want to, because you're- I'm gonna tell you, I wanna go back to this. I wanna make sure you understand that what this verse testifies about David is not what you were testifying. <laughs> the, the scripture was saying that the, when I was talking about it, it said the bloody hands he couldn't get in and the fact is that yes he even won even just one sin is sin right that's 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 still a sin. Here we got God dealing with other men because of the righteousness of David and matter of fact what he says save for the matter save for the matter and there was a there was a series of sins here to include murder Listen, he covers that by saying he categorized all of that under the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Bathsheba was his wife. They but see, the, the thing right. it is, is that the thing so, it is, is that it's so that, 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 is, is that, 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 that he pulled out and said, this was not pleasing to God. But, yeah, but, 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 but what it demonstrates in that scripture is that a man's heart can be with God, but his actions not. Exactly. And I think that that's, that's what the, the conversation that was. That doesn't say that. Well, that verse said, if I'm reading this correct, that verse said that David did that which was right in the eyes of the law. Right. Uh, and save for, save for what yeah. happened with Uriah's wife. Which one, is, one, so you got one incident. You said one, there ain't no one incident at a uh, bishop. That's, was, that's yeah, one. Conspiracy incident. with one. Hold on, hold on. It's fornication conspiracy. and murder. Conspiracy, we would get that one. Okay, that's a whole okay. slew of stuff. All in. I'm telling you is, all I'm telling you is that when he, when the scripture talks about that, it right. said, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. What, right, in that he matter, all, he puts all of that under that one category. Exactly, and I like the word you said, all of that, meaning there were, now, there was a series of things in that matter. There were sin, right? Murder. Well, Y'all trying to tell me was well, that David lived a lifestyle of sin. No, no, I said it that day he was allowed to. Y'all were telling me. Y'all were going through that enumerating thing, and I'm well, like, wait a minute. That ain't what it's supposed to say. Well, well, I don't know why he didn't talk about the numbering issue. I don't know why the prophet didn't say that, but all I can say is that in that Uriah's case, there's a series of sin, not one, that took place. But it didn't change David's heart. It didn't change his heart. And the question is, when we bring people into the body of Christ, that's the first step. That's the first okay, step. Okay, so if God didn't overlook the Uriah situation, what make you think he would go overlook other situations? Well, what, what do you mean? And now let's, 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 it, let's it, go ahead. He didn't. He didn't, he, didn't overlook, he didn't overlook what David did. He no. didn't. What did he do? So yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think that's a good point there here, though, is that when you say he didn't overlook, but David still continued to be king. as king and honored as king. So when people come into the body of Christ, they may do some things. That they God don't. may do. They may do some things. No, in other words, no, this man trying to bring people into the body of Christ that have a lifestyle of Uriah. What do we matter? You bring people in who are doing this day in and day out. All, all the days of their lives. And, you, and here's the other thing. You don't know that these people are going to change. We don't know. That's not our responsibility. But you're going to stick them into the body of Christ and run the risk of them causing other people because what happened when whatever happened, I found it to be true. At, now you can ask uh, Watson this. What's that church of Beulah Land up in Macon? Beulah yeah. Land. Yeah, yeah, that got bad. They they had, bad, but that, they, that, they that, allowed that was, some homosexuals and gays to be in the choir. But that guy did not address those issues. Hold he on. really didn't. I mean, it, went, it went so much that they were gay and homosexual, but he allowed them to continue to practice without addressing it. In other Hold churches on. too, right? Other churches. He brought them up, he brought them up in there, and look what happened. A whole bunch they, of churches do that too. They messed it up, they messed them up. A whole bunch they, of churches they, do that. But that's, that's what, what I'm telling, telling you. And what did we learn from that? Huh? What did we learn from that? What we learned yeah, is, the whole what I learned from that, that's not unique with that church. I see no. how many, how what, many that, what you learn from that is, is that it's outside of the workings of the spirit of God. Yeah, but my point is that it, that's, that's not unique for that church. 
That you say so, what, what's that got to do with it? You so they all roll. You you are you saying? And I think they all roll. I think all roll. Let's get that clear. What's the difference between a, a fornicator and a homosexual? No, not. And how many people do we bring into the body that are, are, are fornicators? Let me find out you fornicating, and you'll when find it, out. Well, that's a different story. But how many people do you know coming into the body? I, I ain't, listen, all I'm telling you is that I ain't the leader in that place. What I'm telling you is that according to scripture, I have an obligation that if I know sin is going down, I am to hold it accountable. Right. I don't know why these men call themselves men of God and tolerate things that scripture clearly tell them they're not tolerate. Well, because some of you sleeping with you just sleeping with women in the church, and I know it, you're gonna be dealt with. Well, and see, if you lie. If you're consistent and loud, and I know it, you're gonna be dealt with. And see, and that's, and I think that's the whole point. I think what far as the world looks at is that you, the churches tolerated all of these things across the board, and and and, and either we saying we are addressing it and allowing them to be worked on and discipled. That's and so therefore anybody can come into the body of Christ with the intent of discipleship. That's, that's the whole that's point. Why. This is why the new generation don't want to have nothing to do with us. I know, because we want to be able to, well, I'm because saying we, this, this Because we have failed to we demonstrate. Failed. They can look at our lives and they can yeah. look at scripture and say, y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. That's the whole point. That's exactly what they say. Bishop, that's a- I know, because I don't talk to some of them. They don't, they don't want, I don't want to have nothing to do with that God thing, because I see what y'all do. That's what exactly like, what they wow. say. I know it. And that's why I'm saying you being hip, either we either work the process, of rebuilding our image to the point of saying is God said bring them in and disciple them. I think that's the whole mission too, to disciple people, right? We talked about that one time before. The, the church is supposed to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Okay, and let me show you something. Let me show you something that y'all didn't take into consideration. If you know it's wrong to be a drunk, if you know it's wrong to be a fornicator, when the Spirit of God comes in to save you, He's going to convict, he's going to convict you according to that knowledge that is of God. And it's of God that fornication is wrong. It's, it is of God to be addicted to alcohol that that is wrong. The knowledge that you have of God, conscious-wise, as if what is wrong, the Spirit of God, when He has come, he said, if you look at the text, he said, he will convict, he will reprove the world of sin. Mm -hmm. when, this, when you bring that person to Christ and, this, and you minister him the gospel, the spirit of God is going to convict him of those things. But how long does it what take? he will not convict him of is what he does not have knowledge of. Gotcha. But you can't tell me that you've got homosexual folk walking around thinking that homosexuality is acceptable in God's sight. Yeah, I think you do. I, I really do. Or, or alcoholic or anything else. Yeah, I, I think that I think that they do. I, I think that no, I, 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 I don't think that they do. I, I think, think they know it's wrong. I, I think, think someone ever received. I remember the scripture said that the, the gospel here is from the law to the head that mind blinded by the God of the world. I think that they perceive it as just being an awful lifestyle. That's just like, just like they see. And they don't, don't know the scripture. We haven't preached to them. They don't even know. So you're telling me. You're telling me that it is possible for a person to have a conscious awareness that that come from, that came from God that fornication is okay. Well, I think the problem about yeah, this. I really think that, that I know that's true but because what? uh because uh I man I no mean, they believe it's okay in the sight of God. I don't even know what they think back to God into the equation. Period. I don't even well, think they think listen, about it. every person that God brings into this world, every person has a sense of right and wrong. But ain't nobody that, that ain't nobody that don't have that. But where's the purpose of deliverance, though? Hold on. So, so from the day that you're born, God begins to develop in you, allow to be brought in you. You've got a conscience. Every human being's got a conscience. Yes, sir. And conscience is a policing that happens outside of you. <laughs> That's why when your mama asks you. Did you did you break that item that you broke, and you begin to lie inside? You know you lied, and you know it wrong. Mama, I didn't do it. But why are you saying you didn't do it? 
There's something inside of you saying, you lying dog. You know you did it. <laughs> <laughs>